Uh, thanks to some good comments in my part one video, um, somebody suggested um, boiling it in hot water and that's exactly what I did. I uh, stuck some boiling water in my ultrasonic cleaner and I put it in there and let it go for about 10 minutes. Took it out, it was quite hot and the varnish or residue had definitely softened up quite a bit. So I was able to um, start removing them. It's still tough. I still had to run a knife round the edges and poke a knife down between the laminations so that I could get in down inside as much as I can and also from the other direction as well and that left me uh, with just enough to pull it out. What I did was I split them along here then I used a pair of these pliers here and just grabbed a hold of the edge and rolled it and that just lifted it out, broke the the glue that was holding them together and it's able just to slide them out and it's obviously getting a little bit easier as I go along because now I've got a good gap there so there's a lot of, a lot more free space there. So I'll go ahead now and delaminate the whole thing and then after that what I'll need to do is start cleaning these up. As you can see they're all just covered in the residue there where they were stuck together. Uh, this is the end plate here, it took a bit of the brunt force on it, <laughs> it'll need to be uh, hammered smooth again. But these ones here, they're quite flat, this was the first one I took out so it's a little bit distorted, but that'll easily shape up. But the rest of them are just pulling out dead easy, the E's and the I's there, so I'll go ahead and get on with that. Well, I'd take about half an hour picking away with my scalpel, my little six inch ruler and as you can see I've got them all removed, they all need a clean up so I'm going to stick them in an ultrasonic bath uh, with 100 degrees C water and some, I don't know, detergent of some sort, see if I can't soften them all off and might need to rub them all down just to get them um, down to the bare metal again but uh, yep, yeah, job done as far as that goes. Okay, so what I've done is there's these plastic sides, I've cut them off on the primary side. Really, really brittle, this plastic here. It just breaks away. It's no much wonder there was uh, nothing left of parts of it um, when it was in the unit. But uh, I've managed to leave this side intact. It's on the secondary side. And I've managed to pick it away and, there's, and now it's all exposed right the way around which means I can wind it. And uh, also whilst I was at it I managed to pull back some of this uh, tape here or whatever it is and expose the secondary side so I could inspect it and it doesn't look too bad. It might have had a little bit of heat damage if I just zoom in a little bit. I'm not really sure. You can see it's got speckly stuff on it, so I don't know whether that's just residue off of this tape that's been wrapped around or whether the secondary side has been heating up as well, but uh, I mean if I was going to do it properly or sell this unit on, I would probably like to rewind the secondary side as well, but I'm going to leave it um, intact at the moment. I'll go with the secondary side as is and just do the primary side and this it's just a state on uh, this side here. You can see that uh, it's just completely burnt out there. So the next step is to peel off all this tape on the primary side and start cutting out and unwiring the primary side to expose the bobbin, the bare bobbin, and then I can start thinking about winding it. Well, that's the primary winding cut completely out and the only wire I've got left is the wire that goes to the um, earth on the core and um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look great does it? But I mean, there's a, it's enough there for me to wind. I can uh, clean this up. I'm just a way to drop this back into the ultrasonic tank and uh, give it a good going over and see if I can get rid of some of the sticky stuff and the residue from the varnish. But if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see the mess that my desk has been left in. Yeah, this is all the primary winding here. A um, couple of different wires, colours of wires used there, I think, just uh, for the different windings, probably. Um, there, were, uh, there was an insulating barrier between a couple of them, which that's the remains of it there, which I cut out as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, there's no real elegant way of doing it. You just have to cut at it combination of using a knife and some side cutters and eventually when you pick at it it gets uh, enough 
it uh, just falls apart and you just have to pull at it. But I got it there anyway, so I'll away and uh, put the E's and I's and not Sonic Tank along with this here and just give it a good going over and then I can clean it up a little bit more. Okay, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of preparation to the bobbin prior to winding it. And I've soldered this wire to a couple of uh, small wires that come from this piece of FR4 PCB that sandwiches between the two halves of the bobbin. And I just thought that was, originally just thought it was just a piece of FR4, just used as a spacer more or less. But when you look a little bit closer, let me just zoom in a little. If you look at there, you can actually see the other side of the PCB there. And there is actually a, a ground plane or a copper pour on the other side of that FR4. Now that's obviously been used as a shield uh, of some description between the two halves of the bobbin. So I want to keep that intact. And there's a couple of little wires that come through. They must be soldered onto the other side. A couple of little wires that come through and they're just lying underneath the um, the the winding that was on this side of the bobbin underneath some tape so I've managed to solder a wire on to that little wires and I've just uh, basically terminated it off here ready for use once I get it all installed and I've wrapped some capped on tape uh, just to hold it that little wire in place before I start winding it I'm actually going to put on some more capped on tape just to uh, fill it out a little bit and just to make sure it's everything's uh, not going to get squeezed against that wire so I've got some 10 mil capped on tape here which is just perfect for the job um, so it saved me having to cut it and that sort of thing and uh, other than that we'll be ready for winding Okay, but before we start winding the primary winding on the bobbin, I need to know how many windings am I going to do? How many turns of that bobbin am I going to do? So, the original primary winding on that 3457A bobbin used 0.2mm wire. How do I know that? Well, this is a bit of the wire here. I actually went ahead and measured it with the calipers and it's spot on 0.2mm in diameter. So... I've bought a roll of that, so we're good to go there. Another thing is, I need to know the resistance per metre. Well, I took a one metre length of that wire there, and it measures out at just under, sorry, just over 0.6 of an ohm per metre. That's important for me to work out how many turns were on the original bobbin. And I worked out from the 0.6 of an ohm per metre, and the fact that the three windings on the bobbin were 92 ohms, 12.55 and 67.6 ohms respectively, I've worked out that there were 153 metres, 21 metres and 112 metres length of wire per winding. Now given that the bobbin is 25.4, it's, it's exactly one inch square there, the bobbin, I know the length of one turn. Um, so I've actually not used the 25.4 millimetre figure, I've actually used a 30 millimetre figure. The reason for that is not every single turn is at the base 25.4. It's going to build up quite high actually, maybe 8 millimetres, something like that. So I've split the difference roughly and I've chosen 30 millimetres instead of the 25.4. That gives me a length per turn on an average of 120 millimetres. Now, if we divide that into the 153 and 21 and 112, that works out at 1,275 turns, 175 turns and 933 turns. Hopefully, that will work out and give me the secondaries that I need. If it doesn't, worst case scenario, I'd have to unwind it all and start again. Now, if I'd known the number of secondary windings, or if I'd known the primary, etc., etc., I could have worked out the ratio and worked out exactly how many turns to do. But I don't know anything other than the fact that it, the original wire was 0.6 of an ohm per metre, and the fact that I can measure 92 ohms, etc., there. That's all I know. So, we'll take it forward on that, and we'll see how we get on. Now I'm going to wind the 92 ohm winding first and as I said earlier that's 1275 turns so off we go. 
a little bit tentative to start with. Just to get some tension on it without pulling it right through. I've got to watch when I go to the side, I don't get too caught up. Nothing worse than having a loop that shouldn't be there as it up the sides of the bobbin. And as I get a bit more confident, I can start to speed up. Well, I've wound on 1200 turns and to tell you the truth, it looks a lot. It is filled up that side of the bobbin quite significantly. I mean, if I just had another few hundred turns to go, it wouldn't be a problem. But I've got another 900, over a thousand turns to go and there's no way they're going to all fit on. So I've made a mistake somewhere in my calculations. Well, there's your answer. I decided to scrap the point to, I mean, what is it, 153 metres? Which is no big deal, really, because, I mean, this reel here has got something like is it 1,200 metres on it, something like that, so it's hardly made a dent in that, so that's okay. So I've got some a couple of rolls of these, this uh, 0.15 millimetre wire. These are 500 metres each. Even this will do the whole thing without a problem. So let me go and set it all up and we'll try it again. OK, set up with the 0.15 now. Here we go again. So what I'm going to do now is put some capped on tape over this layer right round and that'll actually hold it in place because it can sort of jump and unravel itself, so I don't really want to do that. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Right, there we go. So that's that one all wound on. Okay, that's the primaries wound and complete. As you can see, you've got the tails coming off there. I've done it more or less the same way as it was previous, i.e. the tinned end of the wires comes up and sits on top of the capped on tape and the tail ends of the windings are soldered onto the wires and uh, they're all buried separately with capped on tape in between them and of course over the top as well so it's all perfectly sealed in there and as you can see that I think the wire size, wire diameter was just perfect because the windings just about come up to the same level as the outside of the Bobbin, of course, that's where the uh, ease and uh, well, the ease are going to sit there, so they're not going to touch the windings. It's not protruding too much, so I'm quite happy with that. So the next step to do is to fit the ease and eyes and test it out. So there's one thing that I forgot to do, but a little bit of a schoolboy error when winding coils, and that was to mark the start and end of each of the two main windings. The reason for that is they may be run in parallel or in series and it's important that the start one, for instance, of this one is going to be in parallel with the start one of that one there. Otherwise, you'll get some cancellation uh, if, if one of them's out of phase from the other one. Um, so I have the start marked on the winding with the centre tap, but I don't have the start marked with the original 92 ohm winding. But it's no big problem, I can uh, test that out with a low voltage coming into the primary and I'll measure the secondary and then I can swap the wiring for that primary winding around and whichever gives the largest voltage out on the output is going to be the right way around that I need it for. So power on. There we go and I'll dial up to say 20 volts which has given me 1.1 volts, 20 volts, and of course there's no current at the moment. 1.1 volts, okay. Back down, power off, and then now I'll uh, swap that primary winding.
Okay. Do the same thing again. So power on up to 20 volts and wow I'm getting 9 volts so now I know which is the start on both of the windings however 9 volts seems a little bit high for uh, 20 volts input um, let me just wind it up now keeping my eye on the input current about 0.2 of a milliamp there's 100 volts 23 volts output wow that's high still only under 1 milliamp there's 240 volts 30 volts AC about 3 milliamps input okay um, where am I? right I think the output voltage on the secondary that I'm measuring is a little high at 30 volts for the 240 volt input. Um, probably too much for the 3457A to handle. So I'm probably going to have to adjust the primary windings a little. The other thing I need to do is hums a little bit at 240 volts, I've just got it dialed up to 100 at the moment, that's why I'm only getting 22 volts output. Uh, but up at 240 volts it does tend to hum a little bit and that's because I don't have any adhesive between the plates and the plates will vibrate, plus the bolts are probably not that tight, they're just hand tight, so I probably need to, um, at final assembly of the final transformer, I need to uh, use some varnish, something like that, soak the plates in varnish before I insert them in one after another. I mean, that'll be the residue that I, I removed anyway um, when I was peeling the plates off in the first place. But what I will also want to do is, whilst I'm here, is check the output from the other secondary, just to see if that's high as well. It should be, because I haven't touched the secondary winding. So let me go and set that up now, and we'll give that a try as well. Okay, I'm now across the other one of the other windings. This should be 38.4 volts under load. And I'm getting... Well, at 120 volts, I'm already up at 46. Yeah. 50 volts at 140, so, yeah. We've definitely got a ratio problem on the transformer, so it's definitely too high. It'd be far too high. Once that was rectified, the DC would be quite a bit higher than it's supposed to be, so I'm going to have to redo it. However, I'm not going to touch this one because I do have, hopefully, I've found a source for some kits, brand new kits, the exact dimensions that you see here. Uh, so I'm just waiting on a price for them. I'm going to buy a few of them. But however, this is not in vain, because I now know I've got a good starting point for the ratios required to get the voltages that I need. Uh, I can trim the primary windings accordingly, to get the secondary voltages that I need. So I'll just document this off camera of the voltages that I'm getting for the income, incoming versus outgoing uh, offload on all the windings and therefore I can use that and work out what I need and I'll wind another transformer. So thanks for watching.